Hello. Today we're going to answer the question that I left you with last time, which is to find the row reduced echelon form of this combined matrix, where a matrix A squared, or in general A to the n, is written next to an invertible square matrix A. And that's actually a much more interesting question than it appears to be. You will, it forces you to understand matrix multiplication even better. And then it also leads to, to uh, what I consider to be the best explanation for the algorithm for finding the inverse that all of you are familiar with. So let's actually answer this question by asking a more general question. We still have an invertible matrix A, but let's write next to it a matrix AB, where B is any matrix compatible for multiplication with A. It doesn't even have to be square. And we can still answer the question of what's the row reduced special form of this combined matrix. And the answer is, well, it depends on the relationships among the columns of this combined matrix. So we know by saying that this matrix is invertible, we're saying that its columns are all linearly independent. So this portion of the combined matrix will turn into the identity. Well, well, what will happen to this portion? Now, of course, all of these columns will be not the non-pivot columns. All of these will be the pivot columns. And all of these will depend linearly on these columns. Why? Because columns live in the n-dimensional space, r to the n, rn it's called. So the all of the columns live in Rn, in an n-dimensional space, and the first n columns are linearly independent. And you can only have n linearly independent columns in an n-dimensional space. So all other columns are linearly dependent on those. But these columns form a basis for Rn. So all of these are the pivot columns, and all of these will be non-pivot columns. But what will they be? Well, they'll have the exact same relationship the exact same relationships to these columns as they do in the current matrix. The relationships among the columns are preserved by Gaussian elimination. So it will have to be the same relationship as it's exhibited now. But what is the relationship between these columns and the columns of A? Well, let's remember what it means to multiply two matrices. And uh, there are several perspectives on matrix multiplication. And the important one currently is the column perspective, where this is the matrix A that's multiplied by matrix B that's not square, but it has to be as tall as the matrix A is wide, so that because A is square, it has to be as tall as A, and the answer then has the same shape as B. So this would be the matrix B, and this would be the product, AB. And what we're interested is in the relationship of these columns, of the columns of this matrix, to the columns of this matrix. Okay, now let's assume the column perspective on matrix multiplication. Then we know that the columns of this matrix, let's say there are only two of them, are the linear combinations of the columns of this matrix I guess it's 5 by 5, where the coefficients for the linear combinations come from the columns of this matrix. So this column is the linear combination, is the linear combination of these columns, where the coefficients are right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, and that will produce this column. And similarly, this column is produced by taking the same linear combination of these columns, well, not the same, the same kind of linear combination, except the coefficients will now come from the second column of the matrix B. Okay? So, just to make it easier to speak, let's, let me put some numbers in here. Let's, let me overwrite these boxes. It will be a little bit messy, but I think it's worth it. Five, 3, negative 1, 2, 0. Which means that this column is 5 times the first column of A plus 
3 times the second column of 8, minus 1 times the third column of 8, plus 2 times the fourth column of 8, plus 0 times the last column of 8. That, act, that is actually a linear, that is, that is the linear relationship that will be preserved in the course of Gaussian elimination of this combined matrix. So, in the eventual matrix, let's write RREF in front of this one. So the row reduced echelon form of this matrix, the result will be identity. That's what happens, that's where A used to be. Okay? And for B, this column, I guess, let's make it geometrically accurate. It would be more like there are just two more columns. Okay? And this first column will have the same relationship to these columns as the corresponding column here had to the first five columns of A, of the combined matrix, so to the columns of A. But that relationship, we're seeing it here. That was this column. This column was 5 times the first one, plus 3 times the second, minus 1 times the third, plus 2 times the fourth, plus 0 times the fifth. And that relationship will be preserved. So this column will still be 5 times the first, plus 3 times the second, minus 1 times the third, plus 2 times the fourth, plus 0 times last. And if you now calculate the linear com that linear combinations of the columns, of course you will have 5, 3, negative 1, 2, and 0. That used to be A. Let's just make it accurate. Used to be A. And you can see by the same argument, whatever numbers are in here, these numbers represent the linear dependence of this column, in other words, the last column in here, on these columns. And since that relationship is preserved, whatever numbers we have here, because of the special nature of these columns, that's the numbers that will end up here. So, if these numbers are 7, 3, 2, negative 2, 4, then that's what we'll have here. 7, 3, 2, negative 2, 4. I think all of you see the punchline by now. This will be the matrix B. Used to be AB. Now, B. So there you go. That's the answer to this question. It goes from being A and AB to being identity and B. It's as if whatever was here gets divided on the left by A, gets multiplied on the left by A inverse. So to answer this question, the question I left you with last time, the result would be the left half would be the identity matrix, the right half would be A. Or, in the more general case of A to the N, it would be A to the N minus 1. And now we're, we've come to the real kicker here. What happens in this case? If this is our original matrix, well, of course, I'll do it right here. There's almost nothing left to say. What identity really is, is A times A inverse. So by the time you're done row reduced echelon forming this combined matrix, to form a Gauss elimination on this matrix until it's in the row reduced echelon form, the left side will become the identity. The right portion will be A inverse. And that's where the well-known algorithm for calculating the inverse comes from. That's really its explanation. Let me just now say the exact same thing in just a slightly different way, actually a longer way, more complicated way, but maybe it'll seem uh, a, little, a little less out of the blue. So if I just write it, let me go back to writing it in this form. 
also good to think about the relationship between A and A inverse. And once again, in analyzing the row reduced echelon form of this combined matrix, let's ask ourselves the question what's the relationship among these columns to these columns? What's the relationship between these columns, one at a time, to, to these? And of course, the answer is the way the first column of the, of the identity is obtained, you really have to multiply the matrix A by the first column of its inverse. Right? In general, I'm going up here, A multiplied by the nth column of A inverse is the nth column is the nth column of the identity. This is the nth column of identity. That's the relationship. So by analyzing, by sort of having this perspective of matrix multiplication and how it's all about linear combinations of columns, right, we see that here the relationship between, let's say, the nth column of the right portion to the columns of A, so in other words, to the columns of the left side, left portion, is captured by the coefficients which come from the nth row of A inverse. And because the relationship will be preserved in the course of Gaussian elimination, what we'll end up with is A inverse. So the exact same explanation, but I think maybe the longer way and uh, is better. And reminding yourself that A inverse can be thought of as providing coefficients for the linear combinations of the columns of A to produce the columns of the identity is a very nice perspective, very insightful perspective on matrix multiplication. All right, so this completes this question, and we have just one more question related to the row reduced echelon form left, and that's, can you determine the null space from the row reduced echelon form? Thank you very much. See you in a few moments.